Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be learning about electric current, adding on to your knowledge of electricity. If you want a refresher on electricity, go ahead and watch our previous video. What really is electric current? Do you know what lightning is and have you seen it before? During thunderstorms, electrons, which are negative charges from the clouds, come down to Earth where there are positive charges. We see lightning, which is this flow of charges from clouds, the cloud to Earth. This is an example of electric current in real life. Current is the flow of electric charges between two points. However, humans figured out how to generate it ourselves, so now it can be made using technology. Current is described either as direct or alternating, depending on how electrons move. Direct current is where electrons flow in one direction. For example, in batteries, electrons flow from the negative to the positive side, never changing directions. In this diagram, you can see that current flows only in the right direction. In alternating current, however, the current can change directions. An example of this are dishwashers that rely on AC motors. AC is an abbreviation for alternating current here, not air conditioning. Did you know that the type of electricity we receive to our houses is alternating current? <clears throat> How is electric current measured? It's measured in units called amperes, also known as amps, and abbreviated as I. Amperes measure the quantity of electrons conveyed between two points during one second. So basically it means it measures the amount of electrons that move between two points in under a second. Also, it's measured by an instrument called an ammeter. Where do you think the ammeter is in your house? Ours is in the garage and it measures how much current we use at home. Am Ears are also named after Andre Marie Ampere, a French scientist who is nicknamed the father of electrodynamics. The next topic that we'll discuss is resistance. A resistor is anything that uses electric current, such as a refrigerator, television, maybe a lamp. Sometimes resistors are also called loads. To have an electric circuit, you must have a cell, like a battery, that provides the electric current, a conductor that carries the current, and a resistor to use the current, such as the LED light or the refrigerator that we were talking about earlier. The resistance is the measurement of how much the current is reduced. Resistors can also be helpful in many situations, such as LED lights. If there's too much current in an LED light, it explodes. So resistors are used to protect the light from sudden bursts of current. That's great for us because we don't want any exploding um, ceiling lights. The picture on the right shows real resistors that are used in tons of electronic products. Now we're gonna talk about voltage. Voltage is the force that makes electrons or electric charges move in a circuit and this push causes electric current. Voltage is like cause, and current is like its effect. At the beginning of the circuit, electricity has a certain amount of force. It also has the same certain amount of force at the end of the circuit. The difference between these two amounts is the voltage, which is measured in volts. Try this DIY project at home. Find three magnets and make sure two of them are the same size. This is to demonstrate how voltage works and also a little bit about magnets and electricity. You can name these two that are the same size, positive and negative. Try to play with the magnets to find out the north and south poles so that you can assign an imaginary positive and negative side. Name the other one electron. Through trial and error, you can see that electrons always go from negative to positive, so they're attracted to the positive side. Every time that I tried this, the electron would stick to the positive magnet. 
Try it yourself, guys. This really helps you think about magnets and voltage. Series circuits. Series circuits are circuits that have one path for electric current to flow through. Series circuits are also closed circuits. If you add more light bulbs or wires, the current is distributed throughout the circuit. So there is less current in each piece. In parallel circuits, however, there are two or more paths for the electric current to flow through. The sum of the currents from all of the paths is equal to the total current from the original energy source. So each light bulb's current adds up to how much the battery has. Parallel circuits are also closed circuits, even if they have multiple parts. Unlike series circuits, however, adding more light bulbs doesn't affect the amount of current in each light in each bulb, so they're usually pretty bright. To really understand how series and parallel circuits look in real life, I'm going to show you guys these videos. Let's talk about the materials that I used. I used a normal AA battery that you can find around your house. Next, I have this rubber band that wraps around the battery. Then I also used wires which are attached to metal clips that are also conductors. Remember that conductors let electric current flow through. Lastly, we have LED lights with metal chips on the ends. Okay, so time to build a series circuit. First, I connected two wires in the battery and attached wires to the metal parts of the LED lights, like so. I put together all of these parts to complete the circuit. Even though the light is faint, it still turns on, and you can see that. Next, make a prediction. What do you think would happen if you added an extra wire into the circuit? Use your past knowledge from the past few slides and pause the video really quick and think about it. You can see that the light turns on, even if it isn't that bright. This is because in series circuits, electrons distribute throughout the circuit. Due to the extra wire being added, this wire uses current, so both light bulbs dim. Now we're on to the parallel circuit. I used the series circuit as a template, then moved the light bulb so that it was in parallel with the other one. I attached wires so that both light bulbs were part of the circuit. And you can see that the light bulbs turn on and they're very bright. This is because in parallel, light bulbs both get the full current instead of spreading out in series. Let's make that prediction again. What happens when an extra wire is added to the circuit? Pause the video and think about it. Here, you can see that electrons take the easier path, which means not flowing through the light bulbs and going through the single wire instead. So both lights turn off. And that's the demo. This is the last slide, but I just wanted to share a little project that I made. I followed a tutorial, which I will link in description. Basically, this is called an art bot, and it can make cool patterns and designs while moving around. I used a motor, wires, a battery, a popsicle stick, a paper cup, lots of tape, and markers. If you have these at home, go for it. Here's a little clip of how it worked. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Come back next week for a new presentation.